Today, we are going to talk about protocol-oriented programming and confusing code. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard about protocol programming. It's one of the biggest features of Swift, and it's also a very powerful way to manage and structure our code. But like all powerful features, it comes with many traps of its own, and there are actually some ways in which you can easily find yourself faced with some confusing code when using protocol programming. In this video, I want to show you such an example and then explain to you the reason why you could get in such a confusing situation. And as we always do, let's start with an example. So I'm going to try and use protocol-oriented programming in order to model the way I'm going to do my network request. So first, I'm going to begin by defining a protocol. I'm going to call it routable, so it's going to be implemented by types that can be routed on the network. And I'm going to say, well, something I'm going to need in order to route a network call, I'm going to need its path in order to call the right endpoint on an API. So I'm going to store the path as a string. All right. And now let's start to implement also a type that would be a network request. So for instance, I'm going to implement a user profile request. So something that is going to allow me to get the content of a user profile. And I'm going, of course, to make this type conform to the protocol routable. OK, so first, I need to have some state in my request. So here, in order to get the content of user profile, well, I'm going to need a user profile ID. And in order to keep things simple, well, I'm just going to say that this is an int. OK, so now we need to actually conform to routable. So I need to implement the computed property path. And I'm going to return a string. So it's going to be the path of the endpoint. So it's going to be, for instance, slash user slash the ID of the user profile. So I'm going to use string interpolation in order to fit this information here. And you can see that now I have implemented my type and indeed it conforms to routable. But of course, if you want to make a network request, while well, knowing the path of the endpoint is only part of the information, you also need a base URL in order to know on which domain your API is situated. But this base URL, well, it doesn't make sense to define it inside the request because it's of course going to be common to a lot of requests. So we are going to instead implement it at the level of the protocol routable. So I'm going to make an extension on routable. And I'm going to say, well, I have my base URL is going to be a URL. And I'm going to return this value. So now I have a base URL, I have a path, and I have a type that conforms to the protocol routable. So let's try and use it. So you can see here that I have built a request. And now if we use this request, well, we could try and build the actual URL to call in order to perform the request. So it would go something like this. It would be user profile request dot base URL. And then we would append a path component, which would be user profile request dot path. And if I run this code, well, here is the value that we'll see in the console. We'll see that indeed the URL has been constructed as we expect. Now, let's say that I want to implement another type that conforms also to Routable. And this time it's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to implement an analytics request. So you can see that things are still similar because the type analytic request does conform to Routable. I have some state inside my type and I have also a path that is implemented in order to conform to Routable. But something is also going to be different is that this request is for analytics. So it's going to talk with our analytics backend, which is different than our regular API. So we are going to need a different base URL. So let's implement a different base URL in the type analytics request. So as you can see, I've just pasted some code. I have added an implementation for base URL in analytics request. And as you can see, well, the base URL is different this time. OK, everything seems to be working well. Let's now try to build an instance of analytics request. So as you can see here, well, I have an instance of analytics request. And we're going to do just like with our preceding request. We are going to try and compute its actual URL. So nothing different than before here. The logic is still the same. We take the base URL and we append the path to it. And if we run this code, here is the result that we get. So as you can see, everything is working fine. Our request for our analytics backend, indeed, the base URL that is used is the one for the analytics, which is the one that we have defined here in the type analytics request. But as you can see here, we have been using direct instances of analytics request and user profile request. But of course, when we implement a protocol, the idea is to use the protocol as the actual type. You know, somewhere in our code, we will have a function called something like make network request, and it will take as argument an instance of rootable and not an instance of analytics request or an instance of user profile request. So let's try and follow the same logic here. You see that I'm implementing this function, so called compute URL. It takes as an argument an instance of routable. And inside, while I'm running the same logic than before, I take the base URL and I append the path to it and I return the result. And now we are going to try and use this function on our instances of user profile request and analytics request, and we'll see what's happening. So here I have the two calls to compute URL. The first one is made by giving as an argument user profile request. 
and the second one analytic request. And if I run this code, well, something surprising is going to happen. So for the first one, everything is working as expected. Here's the return value that I get. You see that it is indeed what I expect. I have myapi.com as the base URL, and then I have the correct path. But where things are going to be surprising is in the return value of the second call. Because here is the actual return values I'm going to get. You see that I have indeed the correct path, which is event, but I have the wrong base URL. I'm still having my API URL, even though here in the type analytic request, I have given a different base URL. So this is very weird, but if we reason about it, we can try and understand the reason behind it. It's because, well, as you can see here, when I was calling base URL on my analytics request, I was calling it on a variable that was of type analytics request. This variable here, the compiler knows that it is indeed an instance of analytic request. So at compile time, the compiler knows which type it is. But in the function compute URL, it's different. The only thing that the compiler knows at compile time is that this is an instance that implements the protocol routable. But it has no idea whether it is going to be an analytics request, a user profile request, or even some different type that I would also have implemented. So the compiler has no way of knowing that it must look at this variable. And what the compiler is actually going to do is that it's going to take the type routable is going to see, okay, where is the base URL defined? It's defined only here in the extension and it's going to use this value. So that's a logical explanation, but now we might be thinking, well, why do we have this behavior for the base URL and not for the path? Because for the path, I have a different value in user profile request and an edit request also, but still for this part there, we can see that indeed our code is getting the correct value. And that's because the path of course, it is implemented in the types, but it is also declared as a requirement of the protocol. And this is where the difference is, is that when something is declared as a requirement of the protocol, at compile time, the compiler is going to add an extra bit of logic that is going to make sure that at runtime, when we run our code, the correct value is going to be used. But when something is not declared as a requirement of the protocol, like here, the base URL that is defined only in an extension of the protocol, then the compiler is not going to add this extra logic and instead it's just going to use the static type so here in my function it was a type rootable and it's going to get the value of the property for this static type and actually well if i take my base url and now i also add it as a protocol requirement so like this you see that my code is still working because all instances have a default value which is indeed defined in the extension so user profile request still confirms to rootable but since base url is now defined as a requirement of the protocol when i call my function compute url again we'll see that indeed the second time that we call it with analytics request this time we will get the correct value so let's try it and indeed, this time I have gotten the correct value, meaning that I have both the correct path and also the correct base URL. So as you can see, even though protocol anti programming is a very powerful way to structure our code in Swift, it can also give way for some confusing code. And of course, here, when everything is in a single page of a playground, it was easy to reason about it and to find out what was the issue and fix the source of the issue. But if the same issue had happened in a big code base where there were a lot of files, a lot of pre-existing code, well, I guess it would have been a little bit harder to find out the root cause of the issue and how to fix it. So that's all for this video. If you are curious about what step the compiler is taking in order to make sure that when a property is defined as a requirement of the protocol, the correct value is indeed found at runtime, well, you can Google for something called a protocol witness table and you will find a lot of very insightful explanation about this process. Now you know how it goes. If you have enjoyed this video, you can like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.